Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. <coughs> I've already got some. <clears throat> Pardon me. I wasn't expecting that. And you weren't either, were you? <clears throat> Does Jesus love us? How do we know? The Bible tells us so. What a marvelous song. What an even more marvelous truth. We can sing that song, and you can't hardly sing that song and be sad because of the messages that it sings. <clears throat> Jesus loves us, but it doesn't only say that Jesus loves us. It tells us that we believe in the Bible. We have confidence in the Bible, that that is His Word. And we can go to that Word and see what it says about Jesus' <clears throat> intentions toward us, and have confidence that what it says is the absolute truth. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And it's a song. It was uh, a few weeks ago, I guess. <clears throat> it was warm. <coughs> Excuse me, goodness. I better just hold this in my hand. We were driving down the highway, Debbie and I, and we had Liam and Emma, our grandchildren, in the back of the car. And I heard a little voice. Di won bow, di won bow. Anybody recognize that? Dinah, won't you blow? That's what it was. It was Emma. She hasn't gotten to the point where she is quite capable of forming words perfectly. <clears throat> but I recognized when she said and sang, Don won't blow. And so I started singing with her. Now, if you were there, you would almost certainly say, I'm sure, that that was very cute and that was very sweet. But because you're not the grandpa... And you know I don't mean this as a criticism. But because you're not the grandpa, the sound of that voice could not possibly mean the same thing to you that it meant to me. Hearing my granddaughter in the back of the car singing. Wow. Now if you're a parent or a grandparent, you understand what I'm talking about. And we would count as mentally inept Anybody who would say, but she wasn't pronouncing the words right, we would count them crazy. What do you mean she wasn't pronouncing the words right? Or anybody who criticized by saying <clears throat> she wasn't really keeping the tune, or she didn't know all the words. Anybody who would make that kind of a criticism is somehow not in touch with the reality of what it means for a grandparent to hear their grandchild sing. Amen? Amen. And so what does it mean to God when he hears his people sing? Now, I don't know about you, but, but there's a little bit of the devil <clears throat> who says to me when I hear the song, Jesus Loves Me, oh, that's just a kid's song. Now, you don't have to raise your hand, but there, is there anybody else in here that there's just a little something in you that says that, and immediately you're going, I don't care. I don't care if it's a kid's song. It's a fantastic song, and who puts that kind of a label on something anyway? It's a kid's song. Did you know there once was a little boy, David, down by the babbling brook? There once was a little boy, David, 
Five little stones he took. One little stone, where'd it go? It went in the sling. And what'd the sling do? It went around and around and around. And one little stone went up in the air, and then what happened? A giant came tumbling down. What is that? Oh, that's just a kid's song. No, that's a recounting of a historical event where God intervened through his son, David, and saved a people from the domination of their enemies. That's what that is. That's a great song. Twelve spies went to spy on Canaan. Tell me about those twelve spies. I got to put my cup down. Ten were bad. Two were good. What did they see when they spied on Canaan? So, Marty, you look silly. No, I'm spying on Canaan. The cog talked to us about this a couple of weeks ago. Ten were bad. Two were good. Can you name the bad ones? Now, this isn't part of the song. Do you know any of the names of the ones that said, we can't go? Who were the two that said, we can go? Caleb and Joshua. What did they see when they spied on Canaan? They saw giants, big and tall. They saw grapes, huge grapes and clusters fall. But they also saw God rule over all. Ten were bad, two were good. Is that a kid's song? Look at, look at Ephesians chapter 5. This is the text that was read for us by Weston just a little bit ago. Probably, if, if you're a member of the church, you've heard this, you've read this about a million times. That's okay. Perhaps you've never read this before in your life. This is what it says. Do not get drunk with wine. Duh. That's dissipation. That's, that's spreading your wealth around. But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Imagine yourself, you're part of the church in the city of Ephesus. One of your leaders gets up and said, we have, we have a letter from Jesus' apostle. Which one? The apostle Paul. He's written to us. And he reads that letter to the congregation, and you're sitting there listening to it, and one of the things he reads is, don't get drunk with wine. That's wastefulness. But be filled up with... The Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit of Almighty God, speaking to one another as you're filled with the Spirit in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What are we supposed to do when we sing? We talk to each other. I really wish that these pews were on pivots so we could just swing them all around and one side sing to the other side. Back and forth. I really like it when you're worshiping in a situation where you can look across and you can see people, look them in the face, and you can sing to them. Because that's what we're taught to do. Sing. And in singing, we speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And we make melody in our heart while we're talking to one another. This isn't just a, <clears throat> a physical exercise of singing. I know I've, I've preached lessons and I've heard lessons, and they're good lessons, nothing wrong with them, about the things we do in worship. Well, sing, pray, teach, take communion, give. <clears throat> there they are. One, two, three, four, five. And that sounds so mechanical. <coughs> but what does it mean to sing? There are certain songs that really get to us. 
Some of them, some of them are secular. I'm, I'm not against secular songs. I think there's some fantastic secular songs. One in particular, I'll mention it because maybe it has the same effect on, on some others here that it has on me. It's one that Kenny Rogers sang years ago. <clears throat> years ago. It's called 20 Years Ago. And he gets down to this one verse where he's singing about the way things were 20 years ago. He goes back to his hometown and everything's changed. But then he says, I guess I should stop by Mr. Johnson's hardware store. Uh-oh. A drop of water just hit here. <clears throat> I guess I'm about to be baptized again. <laughs> I guess you'd, I should stop by Mr. Johnson's hardware store. His only, friend was, or his only son was my friend Joe. But he joined the army back in 1964. How could we know he would never come back 20 years ago? Now, it's, it's one thing to read it to say it, but when you hear the song, does anybody else just get choked up? Every time I hear this song, and, and as soon as I hear the first word of this song, and I reckon that's that song, guess what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking, of, oh, we're coming to that verse. I know what's going to happen when we get to that verse, and I have to make a decision. Am I going to keep listening to this song until we get down there? Or am I going to turn it off? And I very seldom turn it off. Because there's a great quality in hearing something like that that touches you deeply. And there are so many songs that do that. And when we sing songs that are spiritual songs, that are either words that are the Word of God or that come from the Word of God. And when I say songs that come from the Word of God, I mean, for example, Galatians 2.20. Are you familiar with the song Galatians 2.20? <clears throat> See if I can get through it. If you know it, sing it with me. I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Now, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but how many of you have been seeing that and had no idea that that was Scripture? That's a direct quote from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I've been crucified with Christ. What happens when you're crucified? Well, you die. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live... I don't live it in the flesh. I live it by faith in the Son of God who did what? Who loved me and gave himself for me. Now sometimes you can learn a song and you can know the song so well that you can just sing right through it and you don't even know what you sang when you're done. It ever happened to you? Duh. About three times a week. Because <laughs> we gather and one of the things we do to worship God is what he taught us to do. We sing and I, I, I'm not trying to criticize it. I'm just saying it's easy to get complacent and to sing marvelous things that that we don't even pay much attention to because we're just so used to doing it. I like it when we're led in new songs because that forces me to pay attention. And there's a part of me that says, oh, it's new. We're not going to sound very good. And then I, th I think back now, I think back to Emma singing in the back seat. And I wonder, all right, who's this for? Am I singing for Marty or am I doing this for the Lord? Am I learning a new song? By the way, if you read the Revelation, you're going to sing some, or read some stuff about a new song in the Revelation. <clears throat> so we ought to be singing some new songs now. But when we sing, it's not about you and it's not about me and our entertainment. And I think that's a problem we have in our present culture because so much of this is based on quality of the voice, quality of everything, except the heart. And we're being taught, sing, make melody in your heart to the Lord. That's what it's all about. And just as only a grandparent can appreciate the way their grandchild sings, only God can really appreciate what we do when we sing. You and I might miss it, but sing for Him. And sing also for those who might not miss it, who might be catching the words. I read that song about Kenny Rogers 20 years ago, and the, the thought comes to my mind 20 years ago. I wonder if that young man who died in Vietnam 20 years ago, because that's what the song is essentially saying, I wonder if he knew the Lord. 
I mean, it's tragic that he died in Vietnam. How much more tragic if he died in Vietnam not knowing the Lord? But if he knew the Lord, that song that breaks my heart is actually a song of victory. He never come back. Why didn't he come back? Because he died in Vietnam? No, not because he died in Vietnam, because he went to be with the Lord. There's a victory. And it's in there, if, if that's the truth that's being reflected. And I think about songs that we sing that are fantastic songs, and a lot of them are about heaven. Have you noticed that? You know there's only one way to get to heaven. You're aware of that, aren't you? You're going to die. You've heard the joke about the preacher who stood up and said, Who all wants to go to heaven? Everybody raised their hand except one guy and said, Don't you want to go to heaven? And he said, Yeah, sure, but I thought you was getting up a load for right now. <laughs> we want to go to heaven. That is our goal. We know that's where God is, and that's the goal He's given us. And I just took note of some songs that we sing. On Jordan's stormy banks. <clears throat> What's that song about? What's the Jordan a reference for? A poetic reference. It's a reference for death. Passing over Jordan. Where are we going when we pass over Jordan? Going to the promised land. To Canaan's land. I'm on my way. Where's Canaan's land? Well, you're going to die. You can't get to Canaan's land without dying now. That's what that song is all about. Mansion over the hilltop. <clears throat> you want a mansion over your hilltop? How are you going to get there? Got to die. Oh, that sounds so sad. Got to die. No! Ecclesiastes says, the day of one's death is better. I'm so glad to hear your voices all together saying better. The day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. In birth, we come into a world filled with heartache and sin where God says, I want you to sing because you're going to need it down there. But when we die, we go to be with him in the glory that he's prepared for us from the foundation of the world. It's waiting for us. It's reserved. That's what Peter said. We've got an inheritance reserved for us. It's unfading. It's undefiled. It's got your name on it. Doesn't that make you want to sing? Yeah, I got a mansion over a hilltop. <clears throat> I'm going to view that holy city. We don't sing that song. Look it up. It's in your book, number 970. 970. And you're probably thinking, oh, Marty, with your voice, are you going to lead us again? <clears throat> yes. So just be quiet. Well, you can't be quiet and sing, can you? Nine hundred and seventy. Now, honestly, I didn't learn this song with a book. So right now, I'm not paying any attention to the music. I'm just going to sing it the way I know to sing it. <clears throat> and sing with me, if, if you know. I'm going to view that holy city, oh, I'm going to view that holy city one of these days. You know that I'm going to view that holy city, I'm going to view that holy city one of these days, oh, yeah. Tell me you don't like that song. Even with me singing it, you like that, don't you? That's a fantastic song. I'm going to view that holy city. What's the only way for me to get there? Well, I've got to die. Who cares? Who cares? That's what's waiting for us. Look at the next line. I'm going to meet my love in Jesus. So oh, I'm going to meet my love in Jesus one of these days. You know that I'm going to meet my love in Jesus. I'm going to meet my love in Jesus one of these days. Oh, yeah. That's a great song. And you can look right on down through the rest of these verses. I'm going to sit at the banquet table. I'm going to feast on milk and honey. I'm going to sing... And never get tired. One of these days. One of these days. Life is filled with trouble. But there's also a lot of good. And some of the best good is what God has promised that we have to look forward to. And in our singing, we look forward to that. We teach one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And we encourage one another with the things that God has promised us. Every time we open our mouths to sing His Word or songs that are based on His Word, we are doing some preaching, some strong preaching. And it's marvelous that we are able to do that and that God says, this is what I want you to do. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth not. And he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And you're thinking, Marty, you just quoted Scripture. What would you do that for? Because that's a song. Did you know that's a song? Where's that text come from? 
1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God, he that loveth not. Knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love, beloved. Let us love one another. 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Now, how good at you are at memorizing Scripture? Probably most of us would say, oh, I'm horrible at memorizing Scripture. Make a song out of it. Galatians 2.20, we just sang that a little bit ago. Do you remember? If we sang it again, would you be able to sing it? I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Scripture. 1 John 4, 7 and 8, we just sang that. 23rd Psalm. How many songs have been made out of the 23rd Psalm? How about this one? Sing it with me if you've ever heard it before. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. <clears throat> How familiar are you with the songs of the season? <clears throat> You ever heard of good King Wenceslas? Good Bohemian king back in the day. He was such a great king that people made a song about him. And they told a story in the song. <clears throat> and here it is. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the Feast of Stephen. This is January 6th, I believe it is, is the date for the Feast of Stephen. <clears throat> When the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. That's, it was cold out. It's cold out today. No snow to speak of. We've got some snow out there. But it was really cold and snowy in that day. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel, when a poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. So the king goes forth in the middle of the night, snowy, cold winter night, and he sees a poor man gathering wood for his fire. <clears throat> but the king has his page with him, his servant. He says, Hither page and stand by me, if thou knowst it telling. Yonder peasant, who is he? Where and what his dwelling? Sire, he lives a good league hence, underneath the mountain, right against the forest fence by St. Agnes Mountain. And the king says, Bring me flesh and bring me wine, bring me pine logs hither. Thou and I will see him dine when we bear them thither. Funny words, aren't they? They're old and archaic, but we know what they're saying. Great story. Page and monarch, forth they went, forth they went together, though the rude winds wild lament and the bitter weather. Sire, the night is darker now, and the wind blows stronger. Fails my heart, I know not how, I can go no longer. Mark my footsteps, good my page, tread thou in them boldly. Thou shalt find the winter's rage, freeze thy blood less coldly. In his master's steps he trod, where the snow lay dented. Heat was in the very sod which the saint had printed. Therefore, Christian men, be sure, wealth or rank possessing, you who now will bless the poor shall yourselves find blessing. What is that? It's a story about a king that the people revered. Why did they revere him? Because he was a godly, just righteous king. You look back through history, you don't find as many of those as you should. But this is one who was. And so the people said, let's make a song about it. And in making a song about it, they tell a story that inspires us today of a king who went forth when it was not a comfortable time to go forth. And he went forth and he saw someone in need. And he said to those, <clears throat> or to the one who was his servant, he said, let's you and me together go get some stuff. And let's take it to this. Let's get something to eat, something to drink. Let's take him some pine logs so he can live through this night in comfort and warmth with a full belly and satisfied. That's what he did. And the page says, oh man, I don't know if I can make it through this snow. It's so cold. And the king says, you, you walk in my steps. And if you walk in my steps, it won't be quite so bad. It, is that not a sermon? <laughs> 
put this song, and you and I look at this song, and we sing it, and we, well, that's, that's us and Jesus. That's Jesus saying, come on, let's go out into the world where it's dark and it's uncomfortable, and we're going to find people who are in need, and as you and I go forth together, this is what we're going to do. We're going to find ways to serve them. We're going to love them. We're going to care about them. We're going to make sacrifices to make sure that they're warm and comfortable, or whatever it is that they need. We're going to preach the gospel to them through our service. It's not just a song, is it? It's so much more. It's so much more. I, I, like, I like the fun songs. Uh, I like uh, Hang Me, Dang Me, Dang Me. They ought to take a rope and hang me. High from the highest tree. Woman, would you weep for me? Boop, 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 boop. Anybody know that song besides me? Okay. Well, that's just a goofy old song. But it, it doesn't really compare, does it? I like dead skunk in the middle of the road. I've told you that. And we can relate to that here in Oklahoma, but that's, that's just a goofy old song. But good King Wenceslas, joy to the world. What child is this? Wow. You look at the lyrics of some of these songs and the messages they bring. We three kings, what three kings? Bringing gifts. To who? To the Christ child. That's what all these songs are about. They're the songs of the season. And God has said, I want you to sing. I want you to sing. I want you to make melody in your heart. I want you to speak to one another, and teach one another, admonish one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And how many of us have found comfort just in the memory of a song that we might have just sang by our lonesome, but it was a song that meant something to us. And so we sang it going down the highway and it gave us comfort, gave us encouragement. We preached to ourselves the sermon of that song, and it did us a wonderful amount of good. I thank God for songs. I thank God for the ability that he's given us to recognize everything about music and to appreciate it and to enjoy it. What would life be without songs and without songs that teach these kinds of lessons? Well, this is the lesson this morning. Uh, I want to close with the idea that when you read in the Revelation, we read about a new song. Not the new kind of song that we sang this morning, but a new song, one that the saints will sing, that God will give them. And in a sense, he's already given us a new song. In the kingdom, we sing a new song, different from the one we sang when we were in darkness. But when the Lord returns that final time, don't you know there's going to be some singing? There's going to be some shouting. There's going to be some hallelujahs and praise the Lord. If we can speak at all for the awe that impresses us on that time and in that day, <clears throat> we will sing. And we will shout, and we will praise the Lord. Now, if you're not in Christ, you won't be singing that new song. You'll be singing a completely different, very sad song if you sing at all. So this morning, as we close, I want to invite you and extend the invitation that Jesus has extended. Even there in the Revelation, third chapter, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open to me, I'll come in and we'll dine with him. If that's what you'd like to do this morning. We're going to stand and sing this song of encouragement and invitation to you that you might come forward and let us know how we might serve you. Let's stand and sing together.